What is up everyone? JD here. I hope you're all doing well today. Today I'm really excited to bring you a rapid review of some button lock knives. Today's pocket check is actually going to be the Protect Malibu and probably the knife that really kicked off this fad and made it super popular to pick up a button lock. This is the measuring stick in my opinion for every button lock that has come out since and it is still very much king of the hill and my top recommendation if you are looking for a button lock and you're not too worried about the budget because this is a made in the usa premium steel blade that goes for just over 200 bucks but it is highly recommendable and again what's in the pocket today first off we're going to go ahead and start the list with the well, uh, let me back up just a little bit. There is a button lock that came out from Civivi, the button lock Elementum that was actually first on the scene of the budget brands, but I don't know that I would necessarily constitute that as one that people really took that serious because it required gravity. That was the only means of deployment for that particular pocket knife. So I think some people would debate whether or not that would really fit the bill as what really kicked off the budget button lock brands and everything that has been brought to market as far as button locks are concerned. So what I'm going to do is actually start with the first one that had dual means of deployment, meaning the button lock and one and at least one other deployment method. And that's going to be the Civivi Cogent. The Civivi Cogent has a 3.47 inch black washed clip point blade that's made out of 14C28N. You might be able to see it right there at the bottom of the flipper tab. A really good looking blade profile. I do like this a lot. It has 4.41 inch handles, overall length coming in at 7.88 inches and 3.7 ounces. So very nice weight. This has really good action. You can do both the, I just hit my tripod. <laughs> you can do both the gravity knife method that the elementum button lock um, came out with at first or you can use the flipper tab which is really quite snappy so very nice now one thing with this i don't think it was intended but you can reverse flick it because it does have a nicely tuned detent meaning that detent works really well with that flipper tab the flipper tab on this is very low profile, really nice jimping, and really gets out of the way as you deploy it. So you can do like the light switch that I just did there. You can push button, it'll go out, or you can do the light switch method, which really works nicely as well. Very thin geometry. This thing slices through material and works really well. Nitro V is a very nice steel and Civivi has been doing a excellent job with this one. It is milled out inside so that helps with the weight reduction. It does come with a deep carry and reversible pocket clip so it does allow for a ambidextrous experience as well as the fact that it goes in and out of the pocket really nicely. Now, one of the downsides to this pocket clip, it is a little bit of a hot spot. You do feel it when you have it in hand. Now, it doesn't hurt, not uncomfortable. It's just pronounced to the point that you know that it's really there. So just keep that in mind. Ergos, this is really comfortable. And again, that 3.7 ounce weight is really nice. It carries nicely and it's a good size pocket knife. It's going to fulfill all your needs with that 3.47 inch clip point blade. Really like this knife. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So the next knife that did come out to the market not too long after that was actually one that a lot of people I think appreciated because it actually filled a need to have a three inch or less blade because there are areas that are restricted to that that's going to be the Civivi Altus you can see my Altus has gotten some love it has some wear on the black wash where I've used it plenty and I, I do enjoy carrying this one it is a very um, friendly size to carry especially if you don't want a lot of stuff in your pocket and you're wearing shorts maybe that could be another um, great example of where this would really come into a nice sweet spot or a companion carry which is another way that I always end up with this in the pocket but it has a three inch um, black washed nitro v blade steel you can see the nitro v let's see if I can get the lighting to show it for you guys nitro v right down there in the pivot I also love the branding on the civivis they only have the c in the pivot 
and even when they black out all the hardware it's not as pronounced and noticeable and they do a really good job keeping all of the branding on there very clean i really love the blade shape of this nitro v the edge from the factory has been fantastic i use it and just drop it and keep it maintained and it has stayed really sharp and has performed extremely well very happy with this steel it is a nice thin geometry the thumb studs are very comfortable and it has broken in very nicely and it has just an amazing sound I mean, it just really flies out. I really think thumb studs might actually be the best deployment method outside of maybe the fuller, because I do like the reverse flick, but really just comes flying out on a button lock. That three inch Nitro V blade is complemented with 4.15 inch handles. You have a couple of optional handle material. Overall length is 7.12 inches, so a very friendly size for EDC and a very lightweight 2.8 ounces. Again, milled out steel liners, blacked out hardware with a lanyard barrel on the back there, if that's your thing. And that pocket clip is reversible, deep carry, and goes in and out of the pocket really well. Same complaint here, you can feel the poke in the palm but again it's not really like a hot spot it's it lets you know that it's there so this is a really nice option if you're looking for something under three inches this is definitely my recommendation out of all of these knives here so great knife let's go ahead and move on to the next one so not too far after the Altus came out, Kaiser jumped on the scene with a very interesting knife. They actually have quite a few of them out there, but the one that really caught my attention is the Kaiser Original. And this is a Mojave Outdoor Exclusive. This also comes with a black washed, and they even have one that's just stone washed with gray handles, but the black and the green handles have the black stone washed. And they did a pretty good job on it. 154 cm blade steel, 2.98 inches. So again, under that three inch mark. 3.87 inch aluminum handles, as I mentioned before. All three come in aluminum. 6.85 inches overall and coming in at a 2.6 ounce weight. So this is a really interesting knife here. The aluminum feels really good and very premium in hand. The 154 cm, really good job slices through the materials really well and I, again very much enjoy 154 cm i think it's such a well-rounded steel now here are the cons on this one the pocket clip is actually a little shallow for the catch right here so i have to use two hands to get this in and out i can never get it in with just one and it is super super stiff i have had a little bit of a hard time getting this to break in doesn't have the lanyard barrel on the back if that's your thing um, you'll be disappointed in that these um, the action is a little soft compared to what I've been feeling on the Civivis. So the spring feels like it's a little bit weaker and the action is a little lackluster on this one, but this was the next one to come out. Um, you just got to give it a little bit of a risk to get it to close and you got to make sure that it, you keep it depressed and time it a little better for me. Others have said that there's this drop shut action, but what I have found is when it gets to that point, it comes way out of center. To keep it center, you have to have it at this point where it's still just a little lethargic with the action. But other than that, it's pretty comfortable. For someone with larger hands, I just have to carry it where each one of my first two fingers are sharing over the hole, and I end up getting a full four finger grip, and it sits in hand really nicely. So this is a nice small blade option, and um, it's pretty well built, but it isn't a, a knife that I ended up recommending after reviewing and carrying it for a little while. That is the Kaiser Original, and again, this is a Mojave Outdoor Exclusive. Now, the next knife that came out was the one that I think interests me the most, and I know that I have others to get through, but thus far, out of all the budget brands, the under $100 mark, this is absolutely still my favorite of all the button locks, and that is the Civivi Conspirator. The Conspirator has a... 3.48 inch nitro v blade steel that's been stone washed and looks fantastic 4.63 inch handles and you have multiple choice options for the handle material 8.11 inches and thus far the largest button lock that has come out that we've seen so far and coming in at 3.82 
ounces. Now I really like this. The micarta on it is done really well and it has been really knocked down and smoothed out to contour around the edges and that really just makes it melt in hand. It feels really good in hand, so comfortable and just fits perfect. Like it is absolutely perfect where it lands on my hand. There's nearly nothing left over for me and then I can move back if I want to and get into a position where I might want to do some detail work. It just, it feels really good. The pocket clip on this one too is the same. It does have that pokey pocket clip, but for some reason it kind of lands a little bit past the meat. So I do feel it just a touch more than I do the other ones. The other ones I think because they're a little shorter kind of fall back a little bit more. But again, it doesn't hurt. It's not uncomfortable. I just know that it's there. I can feel exactly where it's at. This one also is milled, at, milled out steel liners to help reduce the, reduce the weight. It does have the lanyard barrel on the back there, if that's your thing. Love the fact that Civivi's doing the barrel on all these so that it keeps everything nice and sleek looking. So um, it is very aesthetically pleasing. The button lock here is in a really good position and the button lock function itself is really smooth. Now, one thing that I did notice with this because that Nitro V blade is actually so much larger and has a slightly thicker geometry than all the ones that we've seen that are at this size. It actually feels a little lethargic, but again, I recognize that is because of the weight of the blade with the button lock being the same size, it does feel a little bit different. I recently did an equation where I talked about the fact that if you took Camry brakes and put them on a Tundra pickup truck, it'll stop it, but it's not gonna be the same level of performance. That's kind of the same thing here. Your contact point is a little bit smaller on the larger knife and you have that weight here that it makes it feel like it's just not quite kicking out. Whereas I think a little bit larger of a button with a little bit more contact point would have allowed you to build up a little bit more and then it would have felt just a little bit snappier, but it still feels plenty good, nice and smooth action. And that fuller is really nice for the reverse flick. So again, that dual means of deployment coming into play here. We hadn't seen that on any of the knives that we've looked at up to this point. Really do like the Nitro V that Civivi is doing. It is really well performing. Again, I just use it some, and then like at the end of that day where I've used it, I just strop it up and it's really nice. It just keeps that edge lasting forever. And Civivi, they do such a good job with their factory edge that I just wanna kinda keep that. When it gets to a point where I absolutely do need to sharpen it, then I'll probably lay the edge back, take it from a 20 to an 18, cause the geometry on here really would support that. Same thing here, Nitro V is kinda tucked away, hidden, and the blacked out hardware makes the C a little less pronounced, which is really nice. And I just love the shape of this blade, really works good. It has a nice wedge out to the tip so that when you go to work on that detailed stuff, you can really use this for some fine tuned cut and just really like the way this looks and feels in hand and the operation of the button lock. Again, this still being my absolute favorite of all the ones that have come out thus far. That is the Civivi Conspirator. All right, so the next knife that came out is actually gonna be a white Mountain Knives exclusive and is gonna be the first that we're gonna see from a different brand outside of Civivi and Kaiser who have been pumping them out the most. I would say Civivi has the most button locks in their inventory for options, if you, depending on what you want. And then I would say Kaiser probably has the next highest, um, if I'm recollecting correctly, I know they have a couple exclusives somewhere that I probably don't know about. But this is gonna be the first one from CJRB. This is gonna be their Feldspar, but available in a button lock. Now this one actually has a 3.53 inch AR RPM 9 blade steel, which is their in-house blade steel and the longest blade we've now seen. Well, actually this is the longest blade period. Looking at the, the stats here, this is definitely the longest. 4.72 inch handles, you can get them in micarta or carbon fiber. 8.25 inches overall in length. And it did come in, and I'm gonna re-verify that. I think it came in at 3.6 ounces because I have the advertised weight written down and that this is actually lighter than that. Uh, yeah, so 3.6 ounces, so a very, very lightweight knife. I don't have a pen. Now this one here is one means of deployment only and you cannot do that reverse flick. There's just no space for that. This is thumb studs only. And the one thing that I will say right away that I've noticed with this one is the fact that 
it does have a very heavy detent so they have definitely taken a different approach to their button lock and the reason i say that is because actually it's going to be easier for you to see uh let's see where is it at there it is you can see they actually have a perfect circle with a lighter ramp let me think for a second where is it deploying from yeah so the lighter of the ramp uh the u shape so it's a little bit uneven it's a little higher on this side and a little lower on this side the way that they've cut it out around the button lock whereas the civivis and the kaisers have kind of like a circle perfect on one side but then it kind of um I don't know how to like it's like a slide out as opposed to the perfect circle circle with a lower lip so it does feel different but it makes the detent feel super heavy like in a good way it feels very solid you really have to put the pressure on to get this out one of the downsides that i mentioned in my review is that you can't get a just a regular um reverse flick like this this way i, I think it pushes up on the ramp too much and it can't overcome the ramp but if you kind of come down and push up it will come out but you have to reposition your hand which is a little weird and a little awkward as you can see there i can't consistently deploy it it's just a little odd but if you come over with the left hand you can deploy it on that side just fine and i think that has to do with the fact that you naturally are coming from underneath of the thumb stud to deploy it but you can also get the reverse flick oh i'm hitting the button <laughs> you can get that reverse flick to go at least i was able to yeah it but it's super heavy and um it starts to put a little indention in the finger the micarta on here is really nice this is the only one that we have seen that has contoured scales on the micarta with the button lock now the button lock itself is very proud and it is almost in the way on this one so when you go to hold it in position you're really close to it but you're just missing it so they did put it far enough forward to where you don't hit it but i also noticed when i start to choke up to get close to the handle to get my thumb up there i'm actually touching the button lock but i think the contouring keeps me from depressing it because i noticed that when i was working on some cardboard to get a sense of how this geometry was now the blade you can get in black wash or you can get in the satin i did just pick up the satin because i wanted to get a sense of how is the action broken in if you get the black wash you got to carry it a little longer to break it in in most cases but i wanted the satin just to see how smooth it was smooth it is and it is buttery smooth this thing is a guillotine for sure and perfectly centered it did come out of center just a touch but i tightened it up just a little bit back and it has remained centered ever since very nice pocket clip on this one as well deep carry it is reversible a little stiff so it does um it does fight a little bit going in and out of the pocket but i noticed as i continue to work on it, it has gotten a little bit better so I, I will continue to work on that and relay that back in the long-term review ar rpm 9 provides somewhere uh performs somewhere above d2 but um equal to like n690 kind of close to 14 c28 in performance so pretty good for the money this is the cheapest out of all the ones that we've seen today you can get it for under 60 if you use a use your favorite youtubers code you can go to white mountain knives if they have an affiliate link and you can get a little bit of a discount and get it even cheaper the button lock feels really good smooth it does not have any lock stick whatsoever and i think that has to go it has to do with the fact that they went with that circle cut out and they don't and the blade's not coated either but the button is coated where it connects but still very smooth no side to side play whatsoever no blade lash up and down either this just feels rock solid and i'll continue to provide the feedback on that as well milled out liners to help with the weight reduction here just like all the others it has the lanyard hole which i am not as big of a fan of because you kind of have to kind of come in to do it or kind of go through and you have the lander sticking out and that kind of sticks out in the hand when you go to cover you can kind of feel the rope i think the barrel's better i don't know if lanyard people would agree does have a nice um sharpening choil as well pretty far away from the plunge grind i think it is the best out of all the knives that we've seen here today and i know i didn't talk about those 
particular knives um, sharpening tool, but I just wanted to touch on that because this one's really, really good. Now, this one's my least favorite blade shape. It does drop down fairly decent, but it is really thin and slicey and it curves up. It doesn't have a lot of flat surface for your push cut, so you have the possibility of sliding out of your cut. You just gotta remember to push down and into the cut and make sure that you don't come into that little sharpening tool that's over there. But again, for CJRB's very first knife into the entry, I think this one is really good and I like it a lot. And to me, it compares really well to the Civivi Cogent. I think it's right around that size, just a little bit longer, but I think the Cogent has the better drop point. So that's the CJRB Feldspar. Let's go ahead and jump into the very last knife for this video, guys. And that is going to be the recently released Civivi Chevalier. This one here has a three and a half inch 14C 28 end blade steel. This continues to be my favorite mid-tier uh, budget. It's not budget. It's my favorite mid-tier blade steel. 4.375 inch handles, 7.87 inch overall, and 3.2 ounces. Outside of the three inch and under, this is the lightest out of all the ones that we've seen thus far. It does have a little bit more of a slender profile. You have your choice of handles. Very comfortable. This feels extremely locked in, but you can tell that it is a little bit thinner than the Conspirator. So that's something to take into consideration, but I really do like the way this feels in hand. You do feel that pocket clip, which is deep carry and reversible. You do have that linear, lanyard barrel again. I uh, don't know if I mentioned that it has the milling for the weight reduction, all blacked out hardware, which looks really good. It has a nice fuller and it has a nice Warncliffe shape to it. So really good for utility cuts, does have a slight curve. It's not perfectly straight. So um, that's something to take into consideration when you kind of lay that on the ground or lay that on a flat surface, which I know my finger, my finger doesn't really, but I hope that it just helps from a visual perspective. So you do have a little tip out there that you could potentially still post into the material when you wanted to start your cut and then kind of cut through it. Fantastic action. This feels very similar to the snappy action that you get with the Cogent, but it is just a little bit snappier in my opinion. Now this one being the type of blade it is, more for utility type work, it does have a thicker geometry and a thicker spine and they carry it all the way out to the tip for the strength. Button lock has a little bit of stick to it, but I think that's br uh, pretty par for the course on any knife when I first get them. The more I use them, the better it gets. The lock stick will still be there. It's just not as pronounced as it is brand new. This one also having the dual means of deployment, which has really good jimping on that flipper tab for the light switch throw and it has the fuller which is really easy to reverse flick and if you just give it a little bit of tension you can get your meat on there and it has just a sharp enough edge to catch it without being too hot this one here actually i really have found that i'm enjoying it a little bit more than my cogent which i kept around because i do like the lightweight snappiness to it cogent still has the better sound but I think that's because the density of the wood probably dampens it down. I don't know what this would sound like with the G10 of the micarta. It might sound very similar, but the Cogent still has the best sound um, out of the two of these, but I really do like the carry profile of this a little bit letter, uh, letter, a little bit better. Uh, the streamline look of the Chevalier is really what I think I like best. I love that blade shape on the Cogent, but this is actually more usable for and more practical for my everyday carry tasks. So I think what's going to end up happening is I am probably going to let the Cogent go and keep the uh, Chevalier in the lineup for this because they occupy such a similar space for comparison and everything like that. But I just like the utility a little bit better. Um, for me personally, this will probably stay in my inventory. I do like this a lot. It did come a little bit out of center when I was carrying it over the uh, initial three days before I got to the review, but I just had to tighten it up a little bit, didn't have to use any Loctite, and it's remained centered ever since and still has very buttery smooth fall guillotine action. Um, and the button is not very proud on this one, so that is really nice. That is the Civivi Chevalier. Very fat, very nice knife, very highly recommendable. And that is everything that I have from the budget knives. I know that there's a beg lighter out there 
And I know Kaiser has another one. I think it's the Cormorant, if I'm remembering correctly. Those just didn't really speak to me. I don't want a knife that big with a button lock. And I wasn't really impressed with the finishing off finishing offerings from Kaiser. It was polished. I think it was brown. Uh, just not really something that spoke to me. And the Cormorant is not really something that speaks to me either. And the reviews for me, the, the pitfalls and the nitpicks that people had for him was just too much for me to want to try to check that out myself. Just did not really interest me. If you enjoyed this rapid review video, I know it was six of them. I, I thought about breaking them up, but I only had two of the sub three inches, and I thought it would be kind of silly to do a rapid review of two, especially since I have a versus battle for those uh, particular knives. I will throw that up here for you if you want to check it out. If you did enjoy today's video, do me a favor, leave a like. I really appreciate the support. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so, and make sure you turn your notification bell to all. If you are subscribed, thank you. You're amazing, and I appreciate the support that you give to me and this channel very much. I hope all of you have a fantastic week. Until next time, peace.